T-Mobile Netherlands is a genuinely excellent mobile network. In fact, the best mobile network that I've ever used by far and is generally considered by many that I know to probably be the best network in the European Union and independent benchmarks by organisations like P3 score T-Mobile Netherlands incredibly highly. As you would expect from a network performing so well, they have quite a diverse portfolio of spectrum, of which the majority is used for 4G, mainly through re-farming. FDD spectrum wise, T-Mobile Netherlands has 15 MHz on the 900 MHz band, 10 MHz of which is used for 4G, and 5 MHz is used for 3G. Then on the 1800 MHz band, of which they possess 30 MHz, 20 is used for 4G and 10 is used for 2G. Currently, although they could widen the amount used for 4G in future. After that, there's the 2100 MHz band, of which they own 20 MHz of, which is split into two 10 MHz separate blocks. One of the blocks is used to provide 10 MHz of 4G and the other block is used to provide 10 MHz of 3G. And then they have some 2600 MHz spectrum to provide a 5 MHz carrier of 4G on that band. So all of those are all FDD spectrum and they're all paired. So in the case of the 900 MHz it's 15 MHz which is 15 MHz paired providing 10 MHz of paired 4G. T-Mobile Netherlands also has spectrum for TDD use which is not paired and this is on the 1900 MHz band which I don't think is deployed anywhere but also the 2600 MHz band which they have 20 MHz of and they will then use that for band 38 TDD and have done some massive MIMO with the 2600 TDD. However, this video will be focusing on the FDD paired spectrum deployment and physical infrastructure used in the Netherlands rather than the TDD spectrum which has only very recently begun being deployed in certain areas of the Netherlands. Every T-Mobile Netherlands mast that I used had 900 MHz, 1800 MHz and 2100 MHz deployed on it. And this meant that practically everywhere I went, there was 40 megahertz paired of 4G bandwidth at my disposal in the form of the 10 megahertz paired on 900, 20 megahertz paired on 1800 and 10 megahertz paired on 2100. The reason that I say practically was because when I visited the Netherlands, some sites had only just begun re-farming of 2100. So they were only running a 5 megahertz carrier 4G on 2100 megahertz. Although even back then, the vast, vast majority of sites I used had 10 MHz of 2100 and therefore 40 MHz of 4G bandwidth. Now this is a lot considering some of the areas I went to. Because in a normal, in a country like the UK, you would only find 40 MHz of 4G bandwidth in sort of a dense urban area. You wouldn't really find it on rural connecting roads. And I know the Netherlands is quite a densely populated area in general, so saying rural connecting roads is probably a bit of a misnomer. But even so, in roads I would see as equivalent to the ones that I was on the Netherlands, I would not expect to see 40 megahertz of spectrum at all. So it will, you know, really, really lot of spectrum deployed nationwide, which explains why the network throughput was very good. And every site having 10 MHz of low band 4G spectrum as well, in this case through the 900 MHz band, provided very, very good indoor coverage. Now, T-Mobile in the Netherlands uses Huawei as their radio access network vendor. And mask configuration wise, they only have about three different mask configurations. And which is especially low when you consider that Two of the configurations are shared ones with another provider, Tele2. So if we just start off with the most simple mask configuration, which is T-Mobile Netherlands only, and it has their 900 megahertz, 1800 megahertz, and 2100 megahertz on it. 
And this is very simple. It uses a Catherine single band antenna, the long and thin one, which carries the 900 megahertz 3G and 4G. And then next to that is a shorter and wider dual high band antenna, which carries the 1800 megahertz 2G and 4G and the 2100 megahertz 3G and 4G. So very, very simple. And the further two configurations, which are Tele2 sharing on them, are also very, very simple. Because Tele2 possesses two frequency bands, so 1800 megahertz and 2600 megahertz, which I will go into more in another video. So clearly one of those is low band and one of those is high band. So what ends up happening is that the single band antenna used originally for 900 megahertz only gets what for dual band catherine antenna which then carries the 900 megahertz 3g and 4g for t-mobile and the 800 megahertz 4g for tele2 meanwhile the short and wide dual band catherine antenna gets swapped out for a triple band antenna i'm not completely sure of the vendor of the any triple band antenna they use however it's a triple high band antenna Two of those high bands used for the 1800 megahertz 2G and 4G and 2100 MHz 3G and 4G for T-Mobile as before, but the third high band then carries Tele 2's 2600 MHz 4G at the same time. The third and final main T-Mobile Netherlands configuration that I shall talk about is also shared with Tele 2 but instead of using two antennas on each sector, it uses one Huawei quad band antenna per sector and diplexes the low band from Teddy2 and T-Mobile into one band on the antenna. The remaining three bands are just like the previous example. During my trip in the Netherlands, I saw a good few hundred sites and they all T-Mobile fitted within the configurations that I've stated in this video. However, that's not to say that there aren't configurations that look different to this or that carry different frequencies, although I expect they would be very, very rare based on the fact that the number of sites that I saw and the number of other sites that I've looked up on Street View and just fundamentally the kind of frequencies and the deployment strategy that they use in the Netherlands really. Just to reaffirm again though, the 40 megahertz of 4G bandwidth deployed basically everywhere on the Huawei RAN architecture, and you know, lots of refarming and very good spectrum use did lead to an incredibly high performing network. And honestly, I'd rather like to go back and uh, use the network again. So I will probably have to plan a trip to do that. And actually, with regards to the Netherlands market in general, T-Mobile is the best provider there, generally, according to independent tests like P3. However, the other mobile networks are also considered to be very, very good. And actually, in fact, the worst networks in the Netherlands are generally considered to be as good or potentially better than a lot of the best networks in other European countries. So networks in the Netherlands, all of the networks are very, very good. And I think in future videos, I will talk about the infrastructure used by some of the other providers like KPN, Vodafone and Tele2, Tele2's masks that they use when they're not sharing with T-Mobile. So thanks for watching and I hope to see you on those.